And welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, we're going to be going over how you uh, the application process for early college credit to the Grossmont Cuyamaca School District. My name is Jamie Davenport. We have with us today Jaden Logan, who is a student ambassador at Grossmont College. And we also have Erica Olmos, who is um, the career services and internship program coordinator at Grossmont College. Erica is going to be the one primarily monitoring the chat. Okay, here's what we're gonna be going over today. I'm gonna to talk very briefly about why it's a good idea to apply for early college credit. Um, we're gonna go over some basic information about early college credit. Jaden is gonna walk you through the application process through the Grossmont Cuyamaca School District. And then we're gonna talk about some college, um, some common challenges that come up um, for students as they're going through this process. We'll take a few minutes at the end to answer questions as well. So we'll do a short Q&A at the end. All right, so to go on, um, I'm gonna just take a few minutes and tell you about why you should apply for early college credit. So this is, it's an amazing opportunity um, to earn college credit while you're still in high school for taking classes that you were going, to, that you are taking anyways. Um, so you can be in, begin earning um, college credit towards that professional certification or college degree while you're currently in high school. So, um, which would save you time and money. It also allows you to enter in when you start college, when you graduate high school and you go into community college, um, allows you to enter in at a higher point so that you don't have to repeat those introductory courses that you already, you, that you've taken at the high school level because you've already shown that you can, that you've mastered those introductory skills. Um, and doing this, like we think it's a great chance to build up some self-confidence and, self, and motivation as you, you know, kind of are launching yourself from high school into your um, college and career experience. So coming out of college, out of high school, this is a great way to like, you know, build on that momentum and get yourself going into your future career. So all of this is in this little graphic that I made. Um, again, it's saving time and money, challenging yourself by sk skipping those introductory courses and going straight into those higher level courses. Um, you're preparing for an exciting career um, and earning, you know, get having those credits as you go. And hopefully this will show you, you know, you can hack you can hack it in college, right? You're doing, some of you are already doing college level work in your high school um, class. So hopefully that'll help increase your academic confidence as you move forward. Okay, so I'm gonna go over some basic information about um, early college credit. I've been saying early college credit. You might also hear me or Jaden or somebody else use the term, your teacher maybe, articulation or articulated credit. Um, this is the same thing as early college credit um, in, as we're using it now. Early college credit is actually a bit more of an umbrella term and um, there's some other things that fall under it, but for our purposes in the Grossmont District, um, we, we're gonna be talking about articulation and early college credit as the same thing. Um, so what Grossmont Union High School District courses are articulated? Well, if you were getting my, um, if you were getting the messages about this webinar, you are probably in one of these courses, but if you want to double check, there is a list that is linked there. And maybe, I'm sorry, I'll go back, I'll put, I'll send out this presentation as well. Um, maybe somebody could, I don't know, paste this into the webinar. I'll do that in a, maybe in a moment. But here's a, a list by site. So you can look up your site and you can see the list of here is the high school course and you can see the college course um, that it articulates to. So most of our articulated courses have to do with ca um, career pathways at the college level. So for example, we have um, eight, um, arts, media and entertainment courses. Here, those are um, articulated with graphic design courses at the college level and so on. So you can see by site, not every site, unfortunately, has the same number of articulated courses. Um, it just has to do mostly with the CT career and technical education pathways that are offered at those sites. So um, in any case, that is here. 
Let me go back to my presentation. Um, actually, maybe I'll take a minute. I'm gonna go back to the very beginning in case you didn't pull it up. Maybe take a minute if you want to. Here's a bit.ly. It's bit.ly slash gccd apply. If you didn't, if you weren't able to pull up the presentation and there's the QR code too. So if you wanna follow along on your phone as I'm going, you can look at the links too. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, so those are. this is the list of courses that are articulated by site. You might have taken more than one. If you took an articulated, if you took a course in your pathway last year, um, it might be articulated. So double check, right? And you can still apply for that credit this year. So if you didn't apply last year, you can apply this year. You have three years from the date that you complete um, the uh, from the date that you complete the course to apply for the credit. So if you, although I would not suggest, I would suggest that you don't wait three years, right? But if you missed it last year, apply this year, right? So if you are in the graphic design or um, excuse me, the digital arts pathway, that pathway has more than one course that is articulated. So you can apply um, for multiple credits. You can apply for the course you took last year and for the course that you're in this year. Um, okay, so some things to consider when you're applying, um, is your pathway, what Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College, that's what this stands for, Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College District Pathway is connected to your course. That should be listed here in this list, right? But you wanna think about that. Is that, um, you know, is that a pathway you want to continue to pursue? Is it graphic design? Is it education? Um, and then just take make a note of which college, is it Grossmont or Cuyamaca that is offering your articulated course? Whichever college is offering the course, that's the, cor that's the college you should choose on your application, right? When you're applying. Um, you can apply to the opposite ones and the credits go back and forth, but it's better to actually fill out the application for the college where your course is offered. So just keep, make a note of that. Um, and then also, again, it's just, it's really helpful to think about, are you planning to pursue um, this pathway as, a, as, you know, in college? Is this something you want to pursue as a career? If it's not, the credit can still be used as elective credit as you go forward. Um, so even if you don't pursue graphic design, for example, your graphic design credit can be, can transfer to other schools as an elective credit. So if you're, if you're not planning to attend Grossmont or Cuyamaca College, you should still apply for this credit because you can usually transfer the credit to another institution. I think I get into that here, right? So one Grossmont Union High School District course, so one full year, two semester course at the Grossmont Union High School District is equal to three units of college credit. That's a one, because the college, their courses are usually one semester long. So it's equal to a one semester course. So you can apply for up to 12 units of early college credit. Most of you won't hit that 12, 12 units. It's almost impossible, I think. There, there's just not that many offered. But just so you know, you can apply for up to 12 units of early college credit. Most of the time that credit will transfer to other institutions um, as elective credit, but it's entirely up to that other institution whether or not they accept the credit. Um, so whether or not a course transfers to another college depends on the other college, right? So if you, um, but most courses will transfer as elective credit. So again, even if you're not planning to attend Grossmont Cuyamaca College, Grossmont or Cuyamaca College, maybe you're planning to go to San Diego State or UC San Diego, you should still apply for this credit through Grossmont Cuyamaca, and then you can transfer it, transfer it to your four-year institution, wherever you're going, right? And most of the time, again, it will transfer as elective credit, which is great, right? It's still free college credit that you earn that you're not going to have to pay for at your other school. 
Okay, so apply for this credit, even if you're not planning to go to Grossmont or Cuyamaca. If you are planning to grow, go to Grossmont or Cuyamaca and you're planning to pursue this pathway, it's a great opportunity for you to get ahead and start um, at a higher point um, in your pathway. So you don't have to repeat introductory courses. So it's a win-win all around, no matter where you're planning to attend college, okay? Eligibility. So you are eligible for early college credit for articulated credit if you have earned an A or a B for both semesters, okay? So that means it can't just be an average, right? You have to earn either an A or a B in the first semester, and then you have to earn either an A or a B in the second semester, okay? I know you don't know yet what you're gonna earn in the second semester, but there's still time for you to earn that A or B, right? We're not at the end of the course yet, so if you're falling behind and you, you know, there's still time for you to earn an A or a B for the second semester. And that will make you, um, make it so that you can get that early college credit, okay? Again, it's not an average. You can't earn a C in one semester and an A in the other semester and then average them out to a B, right? You have to earn A or B in each semester. I'm gonna just pause for a moment so our, interpreter can make sure that he's caught up. Okay. Okay, so this is just a basic kind of overview of the process. Um, and I'm gonna talk about the parent information letter and the pre-application checklist. And then Jaden's gonna take over when we, and walk you through the process of open CCC or my path as they've kind of rebranded re it. And then the actual Grossmont Quimaca application. Um, I'm going and he's also going to talk about how to retrieve your Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College student ID number. And then I'm going to come back in at the end and talk to you about how to complete the petition form and how to submit the form to us um, at the high school district so that we can then send it over to the community college and you can get your credit. Okay, so this is our overview. I'm going to start with um, this informational letter. Again, if you have the presentation up, it's linked there. There's also a link at the end of the presentation. I would strongly suggest that you and your parent or guardian review this letter together to figure out if this is the right thing for you. If it is the right thing for you, then you won't want to move on to filling out um, just to get started, right? So that you have all your information. Um, this pre-application checklist, and this is what it looks like. So it's just kind of helping you collect some information that you can use before you start the application process that Jaden's going to walk you through. So you want to have this information handy at the time when you sit down to complete the application so that you're not, you know, looking all over for it, right? So you want to have first a non-GUHSD email. And I'm sure most of you probably do, whether it's, you probably have a separate Gmail account, right? But you cannot use your GUHSD Gmail account to complete this application because afterwards it's, you know, you're, when you graduate, you're gonna lose access to that account. So you wanna have an account that you can continue to access after graduation. So if that's Gmail, Yahoo, that's what us old people use still, <laughs> or whatever it is, right? Have a non-GUHSD account, okay? You're gonna wanna, I'm sure that you do, but you wanna make sure that you know your full name, right? Whatever is on any documentation that you have, whether that be your birth certificate, your social security number, your um, if you have a green card or whatever, right? You wanna make sure you have your full name, Hopefully you know your birth date, your tel a telephone number, right, where you can be contacted, home address where you can receive mail. This is important, right? Um, it's important for residency purposes, so make sure you have, you know that. And then, and this is really key, if you have a social security number, you want to make sure you know what your social security number is before you start completing the application, okay? If you don't have a social security number, if you have some other type of um, an alien registration, a white card, green card, some sort of visa, make sure you know you have those documents and that you have, um, you know, the issue date, expiration, and the number, right? So that you can, again, complete this information. Once you start to complete the OpenCCC 
um, application, you can write down here what your login and password is so that you can access that information again at a later time. Okay, let me go back to my presentation. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna stop my share right now and Jaden is gonna take over. Perfect. Good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully all of you guys are able to hear me. Um, again, uh, thank you, Jamie, for introducing me. Uh, my name is Jaden. I work for the Grossmont College Outreach Department. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through how to do an application today. So I'm going to begin to share my screen with all of you. And so, um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start on my browser. Typically, what we would start by doing is typing in just grossmont.edu. From there, we're able to go ahead and go to the Grossmont homepage. I'll go ahead and give it a couple seconds. And so from this homepage, what we will want to do is we will want to go ahead and click on the apply button on the top right corner of the screen. From here on the how to apply page, we're going to go ahead and scroll under a YouTube video and right where it says number one, we're going to click on a word that says create a CCC my path. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. Okay, and so um, because I'm already have an account, I would it's able to go ahead and automatically log me in. The page that all of you will be directed to, you will have to um, go ahead and click on create an account. And you'll have to go ahead and enter either a phone number or an email address so that OpenCCC, the main website, is able to go ahead and send you a code so that you can begin to create your account. Perfect. And then um, I'll go ahead and give you guys a couple uh, minutes just to be able to go ahead and um, catch up to speed on this page as well. And again, um, for those of you that are able to go ahead and um, it already sends you a verification code and you input that, feel free to go ahead and input your information on the next page that it takes you to. It should ask for things similar to your first name, last name, your address, email, as well as at the end of that um, portion, it'll ask you to create a password for this account. So feel free to go ahead and do that for me if possible. And again, just remember, if you're not able to do this live as Jaden is walking you through it, we are recording this so you can come back and watch it as you're going through this process yourself. So don't worry about keeping up. Um, and also, again, I just want to remind everybody about the Q&A. Any questions, and please, please put them in the Q&A. We're watching it. We're happy to answer questions that you have as they come up. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and give that another minute while we get logged in. Perfect. Okay, so I'm hoping everyone is able to go ahead and get to this point. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started just so that we can be sure to finish on time so you guys can get out of here hopefully a little bit earlier or at least on time.
So um, once you're able to go ahead and get to the screen that I'm currently looking at, you guys will want to go ahead and click on the box that has a number one, apply and explore careers. You guys will want to go ahead and click on apply now. After clicking on that, feel free to go ahead and click on apply now one more time. And then lastly, feel free to go ahead and click on sign in. Perfect. So after we're able to go ahead and click sign in, we're going to go ahead and click on start a new application. Perfect. And then so after doing this, we, we will be directed to the Grossmont College application. Um, to begin with, we'll want to go ahead and start with um, selecting the term that you guys are applying for for fall 2022. As well as um, next, it'll also ask you your educational goal, primarily why it is that you want to come to college. Um, you guys are able to go ahead and answer anything that you'd like. If for whatever reason you don't happen to know what exactly um, you want to go to school for, whether you want to transfer or if you want to just get the associate degree, um, we can always go ahead and click on undecided on goal at the bottom of the screen. Unless you guys have an idea on what you want to do, then you can click on that as well. But I'll go ahead and click on undecided. Um, and then next, you guys are able to go ahead and decide which major it is that you guys would like to do. Um, we have a bunch of different majors. If for whatever reason you happen to not see the major that you're specifically interested in, you guys can go ahead and choose something that's very similar. Whatever we choose here on the application, as far as like our major, um, this is not set in stone whatsoever, meaning that you'll still have the opportunity to go ahead and change this when you meet with a counselor to help decide your classes. So we'll go ahead and choose something very similar to what we'd like or either a close second as well. You can also select general education. So mm -hmm. I think that's kind of an undecided category. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know, you can also, again, select general education. Okay, um, so we're going to go ahead um, and get started. Once we get to the bottom of this page, we'll want to go ahead and click on continue. Perfect. Um, first and foremost, it's going to ask if you have a previous legal name. This is just referring if you happen to have gotten married and you happen to change your legal name at all whatsoever. If this, if this doesn't apply, then feel free to go ahead and click no. The next portion is where we will want to go ahead and enter that social security number. Um, if you have it, please feel free to go ahead and click on yes and enter it in the next two boxes below. If you do not have a social security number, feel free to go ahead and click on no. You will be prompted, prompted to continue on. If for whatever reason you just don't have your social security number with you and you don't remember it, feel free to click no. And that's something that we can add to your account later on when completing the application. I would strongly suggest, though, that if you have one, that you take the time to go find it and get it and enter it here, because it does make it a little bit more complicated later on when you're trying to retrieve your ID number. So um, before you begin knowing this, take the time to go find out what your social security number is um, before you start this so that you can enter it there. It'll make things a lot easier for you down the road. Exactly. Um, but yes, continuing on, it's going to ask for our current mailing address. Um, we can always just go ahead and click on the first, the first box, and it'll automatically enter all of the information that you just entered on your OpenCCC account. Um, but we can go ahead and continue on to the next portion. Um, perfect. So this will ask about your college enrollment status slash your high school information as well. Um, as far as this, we can go ahead and select first time student in college after leaving high school. Or um, we have also a couple of different options. I would definitely advise you to choose whichever option best fits you um, so that you're able to go ahead and continue on. Um, just for example purposes, I'll go ahead and select first time student in college. And then um, we'll want to go ahead and decide your education level as of August 14th, 2022. 
Um, if you will happen to be graduated by then, you'll want to go ahead and click on received high school diploma from US school. Um, other than that, you'll want to go ahead and select whichever best applies to your situation. And upon completing that, we'll want to go ahead and select our graduation date. So I will go ahead and select um, a random one just for just for example sakes. Um, we'll go ahead and select June 12th, 2022. Um, and we'll want to go ahead and answer this in future tense. So we instead of did you receive your diploma, will you receive your diploma or certificate in California, we'll go ahead and select yes for that. And then have you attended high school in California for three or more years? If this applies, feel free to click yes. If no, then feel free to click no. And perfect. So um, next, this asks about the high school that you are currently attending. Um, so you can go ahead and enter the name of the school here. Um, it will automatically pop up for you. Feel free to go ahead and click on the option that pops up. And if for whatever reason, the school that you're searching up doesn't happen to be there, you can go ahead and select my school is not on the list. And that's all the information it'll ask you. You can just manually go ahead and enter the high school the information there. And then so moving on, um, it will go ahead and ask us about our high school transcript information. We can go ahead and enter what our unweighted high school GPA is here. Um, I'll go ahead and enter a 3.5, for example. Um, and so for this next portion, it's going to go ahead and ask us what is the highest, um, our highest English course that we completed in high school. Um, you can either answer that with your current English class if you happen to be a senior or um, the English class that you are scheduled to be taking. So um, I'll go ahead and give our translators a second to catch up. Perfect. And then so yes, for the next portion, you'll want to go ahead and select the grade that you received. Um, if you're currently in the class, you're more than welcome to mark down the grade that you currently have in the class right now. And so um, the same is going to go for your math courses. Um, if you're currently taking a math course, please feel free to go ahead and select that and then select the grade that you currently have in the class as well. After doing that, we can go ahead and continue on. Perfect. And then so the next portion is going to ask for a citizenship slash immigration status. You're more than welcome to select whichever from the list that applies to you. Um, I'll go ahead and click US citizen, for example. And um, if you go ahead and click US citizen, it actually doesn't ask you any questions, but um, it will ask your affiliation with the military. If none of these apply to you, feel free to click none apply to me. Otherwise, feel free to go ahead and look through the list and select whichever applies to you. And then perfect, we can go ahead and continue on. And so this next portion is asking, have you lived in California continuously since August 14th, 2020? Um, if you have, feel free to go ahead and click yes. If no, then feel free to click no. This next portion is asking if you've partaken in any of these out-of-state activities whatsoever. If none of these apply to you, feel free to leave it blank. If you have partaken in any of these, feel free to click whichever applies. And then this next portion is asking if you have ever been in court-ordered foster care. You will need to answer this portion, so you can either select yes or no. I'll go ahead and select no for example purposes. And then we can go ahead and click continue. Perfect. And then so this next portion is asking for our needs and interests academically. Um, so we can go ahead and answer, are you comfortable reading and writing in English? Um, if you feel comfortable with that, you're more than welcome to select yes or no. This next portion is asking in regards to financial aid. Um, you can select if you're interested in receiving information about money for college. So we can go ahead and click yes. The next question is asking if you or your family is receiving 10F, CalWORKs, Social Security, or just general assistance as well. So we can go ahead and click yes or no. Um, I would generally try to 
um, talk to your parent. If you guys happen to be on this, then you can click yes. But if you've never heard about it, I usually recommend students to just click no. Um, this won't affect your application whatsoever. This is just information for the college. And then uh, the athletic interest portion is just asking if you're interested in joining a sport whatsoever while you're taking courses at Grossmont College. So if you are interested, you're more than welcome to click yes. And if you aren't interested in sports whatsoever, then you can click no. And again, this doesn't affect your eligibility for the college whatsoever. And so um, the next portion that we have is the programs and services. Um, what we will want to do is you are more than welcome to go ahead and select whichever of these applies to you. Um, again, nothing is affected on your application if you click none of them, but if you click any of them, you will receive more information about these services. So um, I would definitely recommend any students to go ahead and click as many of these as possible just so that you can have more services to help you. But if we don't have any questions, we're going to go ahead and continue on. Perfect. And then so this is just asking about our gender slash transgender information. Uh, feel free to go ahead and select your gender from the list. Um, and then on the right of that, it also asks, do you consider yourself transgender? Um, you can click whichever applies to you. Next, it's asking to indicate your sexual orientation. You can select whichever from the list or decline to state. Whichever um, best fits your situation, you're more than welcome to click with. Um, and then next, so it's going to be asking for the education levels of your parents. Um, you can go ahead and select grade nine or less, some high school, high school graduate, college, associate's degree, and so on. So feel free to go ahead and select which best fits you and your parents' um, situation. And then next, it's going to be asking about your race or ethnicity. You're um, first and foremost asked if you are Hispanic or Latino. You can click yes or no to that. Upon clicking that, um, it'll open up a dialog box with um, a bunch of other races within um, Latin America, so you're able to go ahead and click those. And if this one doesn't apply, we have other races down here that you're able to go ahead and click. And upon clicking on one of these, it opens a dialog box with other races underneath that. So you're able to go ahead and click whichever applies to you. And it looks like um, you're able to click more than one too. Yes, right? exactly. Perfect. So feel free to go ahead and answer that. We're going to go ahead and continue on. And perfect. So we've made it to the latter portion of the application. What we will next be doing is we're pretty much just checking boxes. Uh, most of these boxes are primarily just asking um, if you are OK with financial aid, getting more information about you through this application in regards to determining your eligibility for it. Um, by selecting here, we're just certifying that all of the information is our own as well. Perfect. And then this last box is primarily just, um, again, making sure that we're able to go ahead and receive as much um, information about federal and state financial aid programs and that they're able to go ahead and receive our information through the college as well. Um, upon completing that, you will just want to go ahead and click on submit my application, and then we will have finished the application. And at this point, all you'll need to do is just wait 24 to 48 hours for Grossmont College to go ahead and process your application, and you'll receive an email from Grossmont College congratulating you on completing your application, as well as having um, a couple of next steps as well. So a couple of things that you can look forward to in that email is a link to our web advisor. Web advisor is primarily the um, student service that students use to go ahead and register for classes, and um, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share very briefly so that I can go ahead and show you guys how to access WebAdvisor as well as what WebAdvisor is. So I just want to make a couple really important points, again, of what Jaden just said. So this is really important. It takes 24 to 48 hours before you're going to get a confirmation email after you click that submit button. So just be aware of that. It takes 24 to 48 hours. Then when you get the email, it's not going to have your ID number in the email. Okay. So just Jaden's going to show us right now that next step that you have to take to get your ID number. 
Okay, so this is really important. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so thank you for that, Jamie. Um, so now we are on the Grossmont College website once again, um, grossmont.edu. To be able to go ahead and access WebAdvisor, it's going to be similar to how we applied. It'll be right up here on the top right corner of your screen. From here, we can go ahead and click on WebAdvisor. And again, um, this is a student services um, platform that most of our college uses to be able to go ahead and register for classes, um, to be able to go ahead and look for classes in general. If you're interested in receiving financial aid, you'll most likely get notified through WebAdvisor as well. So um, one thing I'll be able to go ahead and show you guys is uh, first and foremost, how you guys would typically get logged in would be your first name, period, last name with all lowercase letters. Your password um, being your first time logging in will be in the format of your six digit date of birth. It'll be two digits for the month, two digits for the day and two digits for the year. That'll be the last two digits of your birth year. After doing so, you'll be able to go ahead and click submit where it will go ahead and ask you to go ahead and create a unique password that you guys will be able to go ahead and create yourselves. So um, continuing on, let me go ahead and show you guys where exactly you're able to go ahead and find your student ID number when you do get that application turned in. Um, so this is the area that you typically start on. You'll know that you're logged in because instead of welcome guest, it'll say welcome and your first name. So something really important to note. Um, to be able to go ahead and get to your student ID number, what we will want to do next is we will want to go to students on the top right corner of the screen. After doing so, um, right over here on the left hand side under user account, we'll want to go ahead and click on student slash faculty profile and colleague ID. One thing to note, um, at least with Grossmont College, is that um, typically, you won't find anywhere that says student ID number. They always refer to it as colleague ID. So to be able to go ahead and access that, you'll just simply want to go ahead and click on this. You're going to enter the same information that you just entered into WebAdvisor, and it'll be able to go ahead and show you that. Um, give me one second while I go ahead and uh, get logged in briefly. Let me just say while Jaden's doing that, that Again, if you have any, if you had any issues during the application, um, for example, you did not enter a social security number or you had another issue regarding residency, it's, you're not going to be able to log, it probably is not going to be able to log you in to WebAdvisor, I don't believe. I think, is that correct? Like, so you're going to, there's like, we have to go look you up manually. Mm -hmm. So um, in that instance, you can email me. And I can put you, I can ask, request your ID number. Okay. So again, if you had any issues during the application where you like, you didn't enter your social security number, or you had an issue with residency, like maybe you just moved to California or I don't know, some other kind of issue where you might've gotten flagged for a residency problem or some other kind of issue in your application. It's, you're not going to be able to log on to WebAdvisor that first time. It's going to, it won't log you in. Okay. Um, so in which instance, go ahead and email me and I'll give you my, my email at the end, towards the end of the presentation. And then I can help you out with that. Or you can also visit the, um, the um, admissions and records there. Um, I'm sorry, the virtual help desk that Jaden um, helps to work on, which I'll also put up at the end. Okay. And we can help you figure out your ID. Okay. Perfect. Apologies. Um, it's asking me to change my password briefly. Um, give me two seconds. It looks like we've had a couple questions in the chat. Yeah, just one thing I want to note. Um, someone asked um, about utilizing their two last names. Remember that Whatever you have on your state ID, social security card, or birth certificate must match your college application. Um, so if you do use two last names, it's imperative that you enter 
both last names into the college application. This way you will not have any issues retrieving your, your student ID number or any information uh, regarding your education at either Grossmont or Cuyamaca College. Okay. So someone has said, uh, someone also said, I, uh, just another question from the chat that said, I never received an email about that and my web advisor username or student ID. And Erica responded by saying it takes 24 to 48 hours and that if you still have not received an email at that point to email Grossmont admissions, um, it's grossmont.admissions at gccd. That's three C's. I'm not sure how many I said. Um, Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College District dot edu. So the 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 answer the her response is in the chat as is that email address. So if you didn't get if you finished the application and you didn't get that confirmation email within twenty four to forty eight hours, send you email the admissions department at that email address. Okay. All right, Jaden, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. okay. Perfect. So as you guys can see, um, it says welcome and then my first name. So I'm able to go ahead and determine that I'm logged in. Again, we'll go ahead and click on students and then we're gonna click on student faculty and profile and colleague ID. We'll be able to go ahead and determine that I'm logged in because my student ID number will be right under my name. So um, yes, and this is also the area where you're able to go ahead and change most of your student information as well, um, whether that would be your address, your email, if you happen to have your parents um, email aligned to your account and you wanted to change it to your own so that you're able to go ahead and receive that information, this is where you'd want to go. Um, let me go ahead and show. This is typically, again, where you would go um, to be able to go ahead and register for classes as well. You're able to go ahead and click out through several of these different pages to be able to go ahead and see your class schedule, as well as this is also a very good resource to be able to determine um, your financial aid. Give me one second to go ahead and get back. There we go. Um, to our main page. And again, this is where I was talking about how you're able to go ahead and um, receive information about your financial aid. It would be through here, whether you're going to Grossmont or Cuyamaca, um, you can access it the same. Uh, this is where our orientation process is as well. Typically, you'll need to go ahead and complete this before becoming eligible to register to take any classes. So something really important to be able to note is that this bottom left-hand corner is gonna be your best friend when attending Grossmont. Um, you can also go ahead and access whatever textbooks are going to be required of you during like your courses, as well as if you needed an unofficial transcript, you're able to go ahead and access that there as well. Um, was there anything else that you needed highlighted, Jamie, that I may have glossed over? I think those were the main things, just how to retrieve the ID and you went through the application process. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Um, if you do, please put them in the, any questions for Jaden, please put them in the Q&A. Oh, there's one open question. Um, so if someone is taking, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer this one live. The question is, I guess my question is that I guess, I think this is apparent. If they're taking more, if they take more articulated classes, how does he apply for credit for those? Um, all at that point, sorry, I put my video on too. Um, all they would need, if they already have a, a college ID number, then they just need to fill out the petition form, which is what I'm about to go over right now. So once you have that college ID and you take additional articulated credit or articulated courses, all you need to do is fill out an additional petition form for those uh, courses. Um, sometimes the um, ID expires if it doesn't get used within a year, um, which might, you just have to fill out the application again. You use the same ID number, I believe. Um, Erica, do you have any, Is did I answer that correctly? Is there anything yes. you want to add? Yeah, that is correct. So just remember that, um, how do I phrase this? The college application, you must have an active college application um, on file 
um, for that articulated course. So the student ID will never change. Your student ID number will never change. However, just as an example, if the student um, applied for college this term, uh, spring 2022, but will not have, will not uh, take an early college credit course until summer 2022, um, they will not have an active application, which basically means the student will have to go back and apply uh, for that specific semester. I hope that makes sense. Um, so your student ID uh, number will remain the same as long as uh, you take courses there at Grossmont or Cuyamaca, that will never change. Uh, what you will have to do is just ensure that you have an active application on file. If you do not have an active application on file, someone from our admissions and records um, department will either let myself know or Jamie know that you don't have an active application. Uh, you must go back and apply for that specific semester. Um, I hope that, Annette, I hope that that answers your question. So some students, you know, do um, apply several times, have several ap active applications. Um, some students take a course, um, as you stated earlier, your son is a freshman, so he may not take another articulated course until possibly he's a junior. And so at that point, his freshman college application would have expired, therefore he needs to uh, complete another application in his junior year that matches the semester that he's taking that course in. And I will also go ahead and, okay, you're welcome, Annette. I will go ahead and enter my email address um, for those of you that have any additional questions or you know, um, are too shy to ask in the q and I'm happy to um, assist as well via email. And, and yes, yeah, so you're seeing on your screen right now too, um, again, that email address that Erica put in the chat, if you have any questions um, as you're going through the application process, you can email grossmont.admissions. And then there's also a virtual help desk, which is manned by folks like Jaden um, or other college ambassadors. Um, and the Zoom ID is here. So you can just, you can also pop in there. Their, their hours are eight to five. Um, and then uh, Monday through Thursday and on Friday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So you can also pop in there to get um, help with the application. Okay, so I'm going to um, Jaden went through this, retrieving your, sorry, yeah, retrieving your ID. There's a, there's, again, if you want to access this presentation, there's also a little video there that can help you. Um, here's um, some information about if you don't have the social security number, what you can do. Um, this is kind of a little workaround. Um, I'm not going to go through it with you live, but just know that, again, if you don't have a social security number, there's some steps here that you can take to try to retrieve your ID. Again, you can also email me or email the admissions office. Okay, and now we're at the point where you have your Grossmont Community College ID number. Um, it's going to be seven digits long, and it's going to begin with a zero or a one. Okay, that's really important. Um, I'll come back to this in a minute, but a lot of students get the Grossmont or Quimaca College, a community college ID number confused with their open CCC number. And they're very different, they look different. Um, and we cannot, we have to have the Grossmont ID number to process your um, articulated credit. So, um, so what you'll do in, in terms of filling out the petition form, there's a link right here to the form. I've also sent the form um, to your teachers and it's also available on our Grossmont Union High School District website, which I'll show you in a moment. You can access a whole, a, a lot of resources on that page. And again, I'll, I'll, it's linked in this presentation and I'll show you where it is in, in just a moment. So first off, you gotta put your ID number right here in the upper um, 
left hand corner of the form. Super, super important. If that number is not there, we cannot process your form. You're also going to check Grossmont or Cuyamaca, wherever you completed the application um, or wherever your course is being offered. Make sure you check that box. You'll go on to just fill out your basic contact information. Um, you'll fill out the information for um, the course that you're taking. If you don't know all of the information, um, honestly, I can I fill it out. I can fill it out for you as long as you put the name of your high school and the name of your high school course. I'll be able to fill out the rest of it for you. But you can also find this information on that first um, paid that first document I showed you the list um, of. Um, articulated courses by site. You can figure out the rest of the information there. Your teacher can also help you with the course information. And again, if they don't know it, just fill out the name of the high school and your high school course, and I can fill in the rest. Um, if you are younger than 18 years of age, as of June 1st, you're going to need to have a parent or guardian sign this form. So you have to sign the form. So Please note that there, student signs. And then again, if you're 18 years, if you are not 18 as of June 1st, please have your parent or guardian sign the form. And then don't worry about anything down here. Um, I will fill out the rest of this form. So at this point, um, all you need to do is turn in the form to either your teacher or to me, okay? So there's a couple different ways that you, sorry, Erica, did you wanna say oh. something? I just want to say, please do not use pencil. We yes. have in the past received uh, petition forms written in pencil. Um, yes, make sure that you important. use yeah blue or black ink. Um, so yeah, just no pencil. And it's super important that you do include your um, student, your college student ID number um, instead of your high school ID number, or like Jamie said, your open CCC. Um, I, it just creates more work for us. Absolutely. I don't even send the form to the college if it doesn't have the correct ID on it. So just know that I, we cannot do anything with this form if you don't have that college ID. You must have that Grossmont Quimaca Community College ID number that we just went through. That was that whole application process is all for the purpose of getting that ID number. So please make sure that you, you get that ID number. And then, yes, thank you, Erica, for mentioning that. Yeah, please fill this out in pen. It just makes it so much easier to read. I scan these forms in, and uh, you know, a lot of times pencil does not scan well. So please make sure um, pen as you fill this out, preferably blue if you can, because it just stands out a little better, but any kind of, you know, pen will do. Okay. So after you've filled out that form and you've signed it, and if you're under 18, your parent or guardian has signed it. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to, you need to turn that form in and the way there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can turn it into your teacher or your counselor, probably your teacher is the best person, um, but we also notify counselors. Hopefully your counselor will know what to do with the form. But again, teacher would be the preference. Turn it into your teacher, the teacher who's teaching the course that you're applying for articulated credit for, right? Not just an English teacher or a math teacher, right? Um, so if you're taking Ms. Youngman's um, graphic design or um, digital arts um, course, turn it into Ms. Youngman. OK, by June 3rd, that's the very last day of school, as soon as possible would be preferable. Right. But at least by June 3rd, turn it into your teacher. The teachers will send the forms to me or you can also submit it directly to me. Again, my name is Jamie Davenport. I work at the district office and you can turn it into me anytime, um, preferably uh, prior to July 1st. You, I'll, I accept them afterwards, but July 1st is kind of when I'm going to start processing everything. So turn it into me by July 1st. And the ways you can turn it into me are you can take a picture of the form and email that to me. Or if you have access to a scanner, you can scan the form and turn that into me. Or you can mail or drop off the hard copy of the form at this address. This is the address for the Grossmont Union High School District office. Okay, are there any questions about that? 
Okay. So a couple different ways to turn in the form. If you're going to turn it into your teacher, you need to turn it in before the end of school. If you want to turn it in directly to me, you can take pictures of the form, clear pictures, good picture, right? Um, or you can scan the form, or you can mail it or drop off a hard copy of the form. Okay, and this is my email address. You can also email me with questions. Okay. All right. Um, all petition forms need to be received by July 1st so that we can make sure it gets onto your college, tra your college transcript by the fall, right? You can turn it into me afterwards, but I'm not going to guarantee you that I get that we're going to process it in time to get on your fall transcript. Okay. So if you want it to make sure that it's on your fall transcript, turn it in by July 1st. Okay. And again, you'll get, you can get the credit afterwards. But again, if you are a senior and you're going to start taking classes in the fall, you want to make sure we get that course onto your transcript by the fall. So that like, for example, if you're getting credit for digital arts or graphic design 105, right, you need that's a prerequisite course for a lot of other classes that are offered. If you want to make sure that you have credit for that prerequisite course, you need to make sure you get me um, that you turn in your forms so that we can get the credit on your transcript for the fall so that then you can register for those higher level courses for the fall. I hope that makes sense. Okay, oops. Um, I then, after I get all of the forms in, I go through all of the forms and I look to see that you have, you have listed a GCC CID number um, and I verify your grades and I sign the form and then I send them over to Erica at the district, at the, at Grossmont College or Cuyamaca College. We don't have the Cuyamaca folks on the line with us today, but um, if you, if you're, uh, if your course is offered at Cuyamaca, I will send the forms over to Cuyamaca um, again, or to Grossmont for them at, in the admissions and records department to process and add the credits to your transcript. Okay. So forms get reviewed and grades are verified by me. Um, I put them, I record everything in a Google sheet that we have, and I scan all of the forms. If you've turned in an incomplete form, um, I return it to you if I can, or I'll email you or whatever, or I send it to your teacher. Um, so I also keep a record of forms that are incomplete in case, you know, somebody contacts us back. Um, and then they review the forms at the Grossmont, at Grossmont and Cuyamaca respectively, and then they record the, the credits onto your transcript. Okay, so here's a few common challenges that students have when they are completing this process. So first, again, sometimes students get confused between the open CCC ID and the Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College ID. You have to have both, but really the open CCC ID is just like that first step right? Um, the open CCC ID has letters and numbers. The Grossmont uh, Quimaca ID has is seven digits long. It starts with a one or a zero and there are no letters. So if you have an ID and there's letters in it, that's, that's the wrong one. That's the open CCC ID. That means you need to take that next step and complete either the Grossmont or the Quimaca application, okay? The Grossmont Cuyamaca ID number is the number that goes on the petition form. So it's really easy for me as I'm scanning through forms, as I'm flipping through them, if I see a, an, um, a form with an ID that has letters in it, I pull that straight out and because I know that that is incorrect and I will send that back to you, okay? So make sure you've got a correct, a proper Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College ID number with seven digits beginning with a one or a zero and no letters, okay? I'm just gonna let Daniel catch up. I see him translating. Um, okay, anyone have questions on this issue? Okay, we're almost done here. I think we just a couple last 
few things here. Um, again, another big challenge that comes up is that students can't retrieve their IDs from Web Advisor. So I put that slide 22, the, there's a kind of a back um, hand way that you can go about retrieving that ID. Again, this usually happens when a student has some sort of residency issue, or if you didn't um, list your social security number when you completed the application. That's why I wanna strongly suggest that to take the time and find your social security number, figure out what that is, ask your parents um, so that you have that when you complete the application. It will make things much easier for you in the end. If you're still unable to retrieve your ID after you go through the steps that I listed on slide 22, which was back a little ways, um, then you can go ahead and email me and I can, um, I can help, I can look, help, I, I will contact them um, at the college and ask them to look up your ID for you, okay? When you do email me, I need, I need your full name and your date of birth. So whatever name you listed on your college application and then your date of birth, just to make sure we are looking up the right person. Okay, just a couple of tips here. You cannot list someone else's ID number. We've had that happen. Students, maybe you had a, a brother or a, a, a father or an aunt or someone who went there and they're like, oh, here, just use my ID. No, you cannot do that. You must have your own ID because it's your, it's you, right? It's your transcript that these credits are going to get attached to. Again, make sure you use a personal email address when you complete the applications. Don't use your GUHSD Gmail address. Okay, make sure you use an outside um, personal email. Again, make sure you print really as neatly and as legibly on the petition form as possible. Um, when you don't, sometimes people will like cut and paste the petition form into a Word document and it comes out all funky because of the spacing. So please don't do that. Please print out the PDF version of the form. It's also fillable so you can type into the form um, and then print it out to sign. Um, but you know, if you can't do that, just print out the PDF version and handwrite in. Please don't cut and paste into a Word document. It messes up the form and we can't use it. And then again, as Erica said earlier to make sure you fill out your form and make sure you sign it in blue ink. Okay, it just, again, makes it easier for us to read and that makes it easier for us to process your form. Okay. Um, some students have concerns about whether or not um, receiving early college credit is gonna affect the amount of their fi the financial aid that they receive. This is very rare, very, very rare. But it is sometimes it, it's possible. And usually the instance where this happens is where the students change majors and they've taken a lot of units in one area and then they switch to another area, um, another major. Um, but usually this is not a problem. So this should not affect your, in most instances, this will not affect your financial aid. Um, it does not at all interfere with your ability to participate in the college promise, which if, if you haven't heard about that, that's basically two free years of community college. So this will not affect your two free years at all, okay? Um, and again, the ability to transfer the credit depends on the other, the school that you're trying to transfer it to and what, whether they will take accept the credit. Again, most schools will accept this transfer credit as elective credit, okay? The, these articulated credits will be most useful to you um, if you are actually going to pursue the pathway that these credits are in, right? Like pursue graphic design or um, health or whatever, right? Um, or computer science, but, um, but there's still great, you know, elective credit is great too. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's other units you won't have to take later on. Okay, again, if you need help, um, this is that page um, for getting help. Um, that Zoom, that virtual help desk um, is, can be really handy and I would strongly encourage you to, to, to use this. Okay, and lastly, just some resources for you. Pretty much all of the things that I've gone over in the webinar so far can be accessed here. 
Um, I do want to show you, actually, let me go back here. This is our early college credit page on the Grossmont Union High School District website. Um, you can find it, well, through that link, but you can also find it by going to under departments. If you go into edu ed services, this is, our website is not always the best here. Um, under college and career readiness, and then down to curriculum. Um, oops, I'm running out of space here. Let me try this again. Departments, ed services, college and career, curriculum, down here, early college credit. So you got to go through a few menus. I apologize. I wish there was something I could do about how the website is set up. But there is a link right there. And as you can see, here's the save the date for this website. But then down a little further is all of these wonderful resources that we've put together to help you, including um, complete written directions for how to go through this application process with links. Um, there's a, um, the presentation that we're giving today. That basically is what this is, the student roadmap. So it's like a visual roadmap with um, screenshots showing you how to go through the application. Um, the petition form is right here. Also that list of articulated courses the parent information letter, and then a lot of really helpful videos from Grossmont College um, on how to do some of these things that we've been um, talking about, including how to apply, and there's a Spanish version and an Arabic version. Um, and then there's a, a tutorial video for WebAdvisor and uh, a tutorial video on OpenCCC. So these are all really great resources. Um, I posted that information here about the help desk and when we stop recording this webinar tomorrow, I'm going to post this webinar recording here as well, in addition to emailing it out to you if you participated in this. So all of these resources are, again, linked in this presentation, but you can find them on um, our early college credit page as well. So that's really it. Are there more questions or any questions in the Q&A that we can answer or any questions, Erica, that we want to answer for the group? Um, uh, one parent asked uh, regarding the promise grant and um, asked if that would affect their, um, well, if, if taking articulated courses while in high school will affect their promise grant when they graduate high school and it does not. No. So the clock starts ticking after the student graduates high school. They will still be able to benefit from uh, utilizing the promise grant. So I just wanna make that clear. And of course the, the cap of articulated credit is 12 credits. Right. Um, and if you have any questions regarding um, financial aid or anything like that, please reach out to me. Uh, feel free to reach out to me directly and I will put you in contact with a financial aid officer at um, one of our campuses to answer uh, those questions and address those concerns that you may have. Yeah, and Thank that you. you're also welcome to reach out to, to me. Um, and I, you, what I'll do is you know, forward it to someone at the college, but that's fine. I don't mind doing that if it's easier to, if you feel more comfortable reaching out to me or at, and we, the Grossman Admissions Department also. Correct, yeah, one student is still having difficulty uh, retrieving her student ID number. She tried to email uh, the admissions uh, email that I provided and unfortunately her email did not go through. So I will definitely check with admissions and records tomorrow. I will go ahead and let Jamie know if there's another email um, that you can send. Um, but for the meantime, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I will be more than happy to um, help you with that. There's one more question. Okay, Annette, just saying thank you. Of course, no problem. Yeah, thank you all for being here. And um, we hope that this was helpful. Um, we're gonna go ahead and stop the recording right now, but we'll stay on for a minute if anyone has additional questions. And again, look for all of these resources um, on the Grossmont Union High School District website. Um, I will email out tomorrow this recording as well as the presentation um, with all of these links. So um, please sh you know, share them with your friends. Um, and we really wanna encourage you to apply for this credit. We think it's definitely worthwhile. And um, thank you for being here.